Hello and welcome to our Lightboard webinar about the best combination of WIM and FastLTA. My name is René Weber from FastLTA. I'm the field application engineer and I'm responsible for connecting systems like WIM to our product. My name is Benedikt Däumling. I'm the senior system engineer uh, based in Munich. I'm responsible for South Germany from WIM software. And we are here today to introduce you our, let's say, WIM backup replication software with a perfect combination uh, with FastLTA. Yeah, let's start on our lightboard um, to show you how we can yeah, implement or how we can use the storage system. Let's start with a hypervisor. Where we pull out backups based on virtual machines or later then on, for example, a file server. So this is where we can get virtual machines from. And let's continue with our Veeam backup replication server, which has connected, uh, let's say, keep it simple, backup to disk device. Um, so we are flexible on, on our side, whatever we want to use. So it doesn't matter if it's an SMB, um, SMB device or SMB share, NAS share whatever, if it's a direct attached disk, but we have several uh, positive effects if we're gonna use a fast LTA uh, storage system. So let's continue with our backup to disk. And yeah, René will uh, go in deeper now um, to describe what's the, what's, what are the effects if you're gonna use the fast LTA system and how we can use this. Great, thanks. So first of all, as you said, you can use um, any backup to disk device as NAS storage. So what we actually do is we connect our system as a network attached storage, which means SMB or NFS, okay. um, to your backup and replication. So just to show you what we're talking about, to get an idea, this is the so-called brick. The brick is actually a bunch of disks. To number it, it's about 12 disks inside. And these 12 disks are used as one volume. Volume can be extended by adding multiple bricks, but in the end, this is used as a volume. There are different brick types, and I will guide you through the bricks types right now. So first of all, we start with backup and replication. So the first repository down there should have something which means it has to be fast. Therefore, we offer the silent brick flash, which comes with solid state disks, we get up around 900 megabytes per second. And this is actually perfect for the first repository. Because the first repository doesn't only need performance in writing, but also, yes. also for instant recovery, right? Yes, perfect perfect combination. Um, if we're gonna have some flash devices at our underlying backup to disk in a, in a primary storage or in a primary backup storage, where we can directly restore virtual machines out of our backup to disk, presenting them to our hypervisor. So. If there is a, let's say, Veeam backup file, we can transform those kind of backup files as, a, for example, VMDK or, or also in a Hyper-V format, presenting them directly to the hypervisor and can spin them up uh, within seconds. So this is our uh, instant VM recovery feature. This is usually something that um, when talking with people, um, the instant recovery or the recovery feature itself is very important. But what people don't do in many cases is they don't try the recovery all the time. So they rely on the disk storage, which you can actually with the silent brick system. But nevertheless, it is a good idea to spin it up, test it again, run the VMDK. Yeah. I think that is something that VM offers with the Sure backup as well. Yeah. It's a very nice thing where you need a performance for testing the data and for recovering it. But anyway, everyone knows Flash is not that expensive. It's not that uh, not that cheap, sorry. It's not that expensive either. So at the moment, the flash brick is available at a good price. Yeah. But nevertheless, you don't want to add, let's say, 200 terabyte of flash only for your backup. So what we do is we keep the flash brick small. As an example, with a small customer, we would be around, say, oh, eight terabytes. So let's keep it small for about one, two, or three weeks, yeah. something like this. And then make sure that the second copy of the data which is actually something that you need, 
The second copy of the data um, is stored on a bigger device. A bigger device, a little bit cheaper, so we don't use the flash brick anymore. We use another brick, which we call the silent brick, the standard silent brick. The standard silent brick is what I just showed you before. It is actually a brick which comes with spinning disk. So it's so-called silent brick. This one, by the way, is the silent brick flash. This is the silent brick. It comes up to, with a volume up to 16 terabytes. And here we can run a backup copy job directly from Weem to copy the data to a second location or to a second um, device. So this means, in the end, you got your flash brick for <coughs> the fastest instant recovery of the last, for example, three weeks yeah, or one yeah. month. And for over the next time, you copy the data to the flash to the standard brick. Like like some archiving solution or, or let's say some archiving copy, which is absolutely necessary to rule our three to one rule. Right. Um, right. To 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 get out of the data, let's say, um, yeah, air gapped. Also, if they are not real air gapped, but we will go into that deeper later. That's a perfect thing that you just mentioned. Um, we got the flash brick as a performance thing, we got the silent brick as a capacity thing, but the last thing in the Weem 3 to 1 rule is that you get, or have to get something um, that you can take offline, that you can air gap. Different device, different media as possible, and air gap this stuff. So we got the solution as well. Just take another brick. We can actually take the same brick. Again, silent brick. Depending on the size of the full backup, it can even be smaller. So for example, eight terabyte, or you take the bigger one, 16 terabyte. You can also add multiple in this area. So um, how does it work now for air gapping? There are two possibilities. The first possibility is you address this brick as a virtual tape library, which means this brick and all the other bricks added to the system will be addressed as a virtual tape library. Yeah. The virtual tape library means everything is controlled by Weem. Weem will control that the disk spin up, Weem will switch it off again, Weem will even be able to eject it, to export it. Yeah. So it's a very nice thing, but there's always a downside on everything, so I think tape has a downside, isn't it? Yeah, so um, also our tape integration is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a physical, logical um, right. um, behind it, and I'm pretty sure there are some more um, yeah, positive effects if you're going to use your um, new feature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So That's right. For example, you cannot do an instant recovery, can you? For sure. As we, we cannot, yeah. So for an instant recovery, you always need a storage device. It will take more time. So what is actually the better idea instead of um, using it as, as, it as a tape? It would be to make a one-to-one -one copy, which is internally in the silent brick system and then just take the copy out. Yeah. The big advantage of this is that the copy, you can put it in the walls, it's transportable media, but the copy in the end can have an instant recovery. You can plug it in, you can make your sure backup, you can test your data actually, that is something that you won't do on the tape, but you can test all your backups. Like, like, a, like a warm device, but with a uh, positive thing that you just put it out like a tape, so you can combine right. those all kind of, of positive, um, um, features combined from tape also with, with physical storage systems. Right, right. But in the end, you, you always have the choice. So today I can start with this. I can say, okay, make, make, make a, coffee, a copy every once a month, every once a week, whatever. Take it out, bring it into a vault, plug it in whenever I want and check the data. But whenever I realize that, um, for example, my tape, tape backup would be smaller because, to be honest, in this one you will have a full backup, full, many increments, perhaps another synthetic full, isn't it? Yeah. Synthetic full, another increments. Yeah. Um, that means that you will also need this capacity in the copy. Yeah. You could also make the copy from the flash drive. It's also possible, Ex actually the same. So you could also take the standard brick and make a copy from here, so it is smaller. But in the end, you will need a little bit more capacity. If this is no problem, you can use it like this. Otherwise, we can use it as a tape library, just format it, create a tape from it. Wonderful. So it's quite easy. Perfect. 
so we can we can um, yeah rule our three to one uh, within one vendor strategy. We can um, we we have all functionalities within yeah one kind of let's say storage controller right We're coming to this uh, later and um, we have a perfect integration and combination of yeah veeam and fast lti right exactly actually as you just said this all happens in one storage controller yeah so ju just to give you an example or a picture for it let's take the other color this is the so-called sudden brick controller this is actually the hardware where you plug in the sudden bricks it comes with the e-paper display as well as the silent bricks. And as a standard, it comes with five slots. One, two, three, four, five. So each slot can be um, addressed with one silent brick. Okay. So for example, these two silent bricks, well, let's start from the, from the top. Got numbered one, two, three, and four. So in our case, we would have number one here, which okay. is the flash brick, number two here, number three here. And since we do want to uh, transport data, we would have number four somewhere offsite in the wall. Yeah, that's what I mean with, with uh, air gap backup. So we, we can just pull it out. We can take the brake and exactly. store it somewhere in the water. Yeah. Exactly. So this is actually what we do for a long time now. But um, this year, Weem comes with a new feature. Yeah. Is it? We, we brought out our new um, file backup, NAS backup, uh, which came out with version 10. And let's go in there a little bit more deeper. Um, if we have some kind of NAS share or file server, we can backup those kind of underlying files very fast and performant um, with a completely all new created protocol and also um, absolutely independently from NDMP and so on. So we also created a completely new proxy service. As some of you maybe know, uh, Veeam Backup Replication works with a, it's called proxy. The proxy is responsible for pulling out data from our productive storage, doing uh, deduplication and compression and put the data on our repository. And now there's a new role which is called file proxy. So, and um, we can um, scale our backup with the file proxy. So we can also use more than one file proxy to process one NAS or one folder um, containing in, in a NAS. And um, also there's a, is a nice effect if we use a fast RTA in the background as a repository because, um, yeah, the, the kind, the art of, of file streaming and, and how we can process files and also how we can store files um, is, the, the uh, let's say, a perfect fit for a fast LTA in the background. So, May I take this point? Yes, so, please. Just want to show you something. Um, the important thing about this here is that we um, do different modes. We can address every brick in different modes. So we can address a brick as a virtual table library, as a backup to disk device. But actually, there are different, not only different protocols and different types, but it's also a different file system and different logic under it. So if we have a look in the logic, or at the logic, we take the file proxy and we create a new storage for it. For this, you could also use the Saturn Brick DS. So there are multiple different Saturn Brick types, actually, at the moment. Yeah. So there are these bricks, and there is the so-called Saturn Brick DS, which is a one hate unit, and which comes with a size up to 192 terabytes. You can stack them up to four times. So you can create one big volume over four times 192 terabytes um, gross capacity. So in the end, that means you got very big archive or a very big storage for a lot of um, NAS file server backup data. And the important thing or the important difference about this is if we have a look at the backup to disk, yeah. that means that you create backup files like this, pull backup, some increments, backup some chains, pull backups. Yeah backup chains and you will one, one at one time start to delete from the beginning or yeah. to move on with your forever incremental. Exactly. Um, when we talk about file server backups, in many cases we realize that we are more talking about an archive. 
Yeah. We want to store each file, we want to keep each file, but we don't want to create a full backup all the time. So what we need at the end is not a file system that can be deleted and cleaned up, but we need a file system that is linear. So what we do here is we use erasure coding and a linear file system. This is actually what we do with our one solutions since 2006 now. So erasure coding linear file system means that whatever happens from outside, you will not lose your data. Because if we make an example here, you create one file and then you overwrite the file, means it will be attached. Yeah. So the other file is attached, you will always be able to roll back. Kind of versioning. Exactly. That is a kind of versioning and the nice thing about it is the versioning is internally in the side and brick system, which means even if a ransomware will attack your backup or your file server backup, you can always roll back to the state before the ransomware attacked it. So you can always roll back, you will never lose data. And that's the important thing, because we realized that doing backup of big file servers, doing backup of archival data, does always mean that you create a big bunch of full backups. And what you want is, you want to separate it. Take the NAS file system, store it in a very secure linear file system, yeah. which means you will never lose data. Perhaps you make a replication to another site, and only take the backup data, which is always changing, like virtual machines, like your, I don't know, clients, desktops, whatever, and put them in the backup where you create the full backups in the synthetics. So we can also do, a, let's say, a 3 to one rule based on our NAS backup, um, yeah, based on a fast LTA system with some, let's say, um, yeah, copy of, of our data, right. and we are flexible, we, we can attach more, um, more, more space to our repository if we see our file system yeah, growing up. And to be honest, files are every time growing up. Yep. So um, we are flexible in the processing by Veeam. If we, so so by, by adding some more file proxies to scale this up and also in the background as a repository. Exactly. So actually, my recommendation would be to separate the data as you can do it right now, and take this one as a replication to another site. Absolutely. But nevertheless, there's the request to transport even the file server backup, the NAS file yeah. server backup, transport it, bring it to somewhere else. And that is actually something that is very nice, because if you take a site and break down here, for example, let's say number five, there's our file server backup, file server backup, and you want to transport it, for example, once a month, Nevertheless, it's a linear file system, so you won't lose data anyway. You want to transport it. It's actually no problem because you just create a copy or a clone to another brick and take it out and transport it. There's actually no rocket science. Everything happens in the system. So you don't um, use your network bandwidth. Everything happens in here, so it's our job. Yeah, which is a, also a perfect fit um, because um, this is the, the opportunity to do, let's say, something like a tape out of your NAS backup files. Exactly. That's how it works. So in the end, you can see that um, we got different different methods on our side. There are different possibilities on yeah. the Veeam side. And actually, the combination of both is a very nice thing where you only need one file or one um, controlling device. It's only one hardware, you've got one service contract, everything is wonderful. And you can solve your one to three rule, three to one rule, sorry. Yeah. You can solve your file server backup as it comes with Veeam 10 now. And you can be happy. <laughs> Great. Thank you for a deep introduction about all the kind of features and how we can solve hopefully many of your, let's say, backup um, um, yeah, requirements. You're very welcome. I just mentioned one thing that I forgot to say. Let me just add one more thing. I just told you that on the linear file system, you will never lose data because you always attach new files to the end. Yeah. Actually, you also want to make sure that you don't lose data on your primary storage, on your um, backup copy. You also want, don't want to be attacked by ransomware and don't want to lose backups down here. Yeah. So what you can do there is the so-called continuous snapshot feature. I just write it like this. No, nearly. Continuous snapshot means that we create something like, like a linear file system, but um, it can also be cleaned up at the end. So okay. that means, for example, once a day, you create a snapshot. 
That means whatever happens, you can just roll back the snapshot per day and just okay. go back to the last day, to the last Perfect. two weeks or something like this. To keep so, it very granular. Exactly, exactly. So that is something that happens directly in our system. And that means that you cannot change the snapshot from the outside. So over the file system, a ransomware cannot attack the snapshot itself. Yeah. It can, can only attack the file system and the data is secure in the snapshot. Only, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Well. I hope you liked the presentation. Um, I hope um, you get a clear picture about the Silent Brick system in combination with Weem, which is a wonderful product. Thank um, I thank you for your time. And I hope you have a nice day. Great. Thanks. Thank you.